Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Monday, August 3rd. Today is the day when the LCMS commemorates Joanna, Mary, and Salome, the myrrh bearers. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Sing to God, sing praises in his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Samuel chapters 17 and 18. <clears throat> when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Sharaim as far as Gath and Ekron. And the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. As soon as Saul saw David go out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner says, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. And the king said, Inquire whose son the boy is. And as soon as David returned from the striking down of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his, ha in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a, co a covenant with David, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David, and his armor, and even his sword, and his bow, and his belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him so that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. As they were coming home, when David returned from striking down the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they celebrated. Saul has struck down his thousands, and David his ten thousands. 
And Saul was very angry, and this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. And what more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. Our writing this morning is from Martin Chemnitz. Uh, Martin Chemnitz was a uh, contemporary of Luther toward the end of his life. Uh, and he was the reason for preserving uh, the true Lutheran doctrine, which was in danger after Martin Luther died. Uh, he was a professor, pastor, uh, what we would call today a circuit visitor. So he wrote a lot, had a lot of hats, and he wrote an incredible amount. Uh, I think we'll talk more about him when his uh, commemoration day comes up. He writes this about Joanna, Mary, and Salome. Why was Christ's resurrection revealed to these women first? There are several answers. First, God was keeping his ancient custom of choosing what is foolish, undistinguished, and despised in the eyes of the world in order to put the strong and lofty to shame. These women were despised not only due to the weakness of their gender, but also because of Galilee, their homeland. But God exalts them by revealing to them the resurrection of his Son, which is an excellent article of our faith. Indeed, he even sends them to the apostles to share the message of Christ's resurrection with them, so that they become, as the ancients say, like apostles to the apostles. Third, in this way God wanted to prevent the accusations of the Jews. The high priests lied, saying that Christ's disciples had stolen the body of their master. In order to prove the shamelessness and absurdity of this lie, it happened by God's marvelous providence that these women came to the grave before the apostles. Now it is highly unlikely that these few women could have stolen the body from a grave guarded by soldiers, enclosed by a large stone. Fourth, through the woman Eve, death came to all human beings. On account of this, Christ wanted his resurrection, which brings us righteousness and life, to be told to others by women. At the fall of the first human being, these three worked together, the devil who deceived, the woman who proclaimed his talk further, the man who ate and corrupted human nature. So also at Christ's res resurrection, these three worked together, Christ who rose and redeemed human nature, the angel who proclaimed the resurrection, and the women who carried the joyful message further. Now if Christ was pleased with the zeal of these women, which was, was not yet bound together, with significant weaknesses of faith, and did not let them come away from the tomb empty, how much less will he let those go away empty who in true faith seek him, who rules at the right hand of the Father? Known in some traditions as the faithful women, the visit of these three persons and other women to the tomb of Jesus on the first Easter morning is noted in the Gospel records of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Joanna was the wife of Cusa, Cusa? a steward in Herod's household. Mary, the mother of James, the son of Alphaeus, was another of the women who faithfully provided care for Jesus and his disciples from the time of his Galilean ministry through his burial after the crucifixion. Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, joined with the women both at the cross and in bringing the spices to the garden tomb. These faithful women have been honored in the church through the centuries as examples of humble and devoted service to the Lord. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O 
O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their rulings serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Mighty God, your crucified and buried Son did not remain in the tomb for long. Give us joy in the tasks set before us that we might carry out faithful acts of service, as did Joanna, Mary, and Salome, offering to you the sweet perfume of our grateful hearts, so that we too may see the glory of your resurrection and proclaim the good news with unrestrained eagerness and fervor, worked in us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.